Uh, oh. Hello and good afternoon. Um, welcome to the second of our uh, little broadcasts. Uh, and today we are delighted to welcome uh, Anita Brightly Hodges. Hi. Um, Hi there. Oh, good afternoon, Anita. Uh, of course, we've got uh, Louis here as well. And, uh, and I'm Russ Saunter. So if we kick off straight away, because uh, as we said last time, we try and keep it short and sweet. Um, 30 minutes um, for you to get a little insight about what's going on in our world. So, Anita, because you have such an interesting uh, backstory, would you mind just filling us in on your journey to get where you are today? Sure. No. Very, well, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. And it's wonderful and uh, great mates of mine. So I'm really happy to be here. OK, so in short, then, I think what I would say to our, um, our um, Amelix Academy students is that um, I, everyone has a gift and sometimes it's not very obvious until you do eliminate other things. And so for me, although I love school, I had, you know, I, I knew I was good at art. I knew I was good at design, but I. Oh, I don't know if, if it, that's my internet that's gone there I, or. No, I think it's Sorry? Anita. Oh, you're back, Anita. You're back. You went. You went all jerky for a second. Then did I go jerky? <laughs> I was jerky. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I took a year out and I worked for a year, and that really reminded me why I didn't want to be doing what I was doing, and that actually my call was to be in design in some shape or form or art. And I went to art school, came out of that, and I was very, very fortunate enough to get a job in a top um, national publishing house in Soho. That was the beginning. But after 18 months of that, I just thought, you know, is this it, really? And I had a hankering to start my own business. I didn't know how I was going to do it. So I started from um, going to clients that were in magazines because, you know, you go to what you know. So I went and, and I asked magazine publishers, could I do some layouts for you? Can I do some editorials for you? And actually, they sort of said, yeah, OK. So little by little by little. Um and I had a desk space and I had to pay 50 quid a week for my desk space and I made 50 quid a week. So I think when you first start, you just make what you have to to cover your expenses. Yeah. And that's brilliant. I remember kissing my first check for 250 quid. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, so and, and I, what I would say to you is that as long as you do a great job, um, and also I was guided by how much to charge. So I was guided by the people I worked with who then said, I will be prepared to pay you this, all right? So, um, and some people pay me more than others, but it gave me a guide. So I was just grateful. And also I needed to build a portfolio up of work. And because I was in magazines, everything I did, I could then get a copy of it and I could keep that in my portfolio. And then testimonials. So I think when you're starting, if you can do a good job, get a testimonial, Maybe a picture of yourself with your client, maybe the work you've done, whatever it is, whether it's a piece of engineering or if it's in a shop or whatever it's going to be, or design or, or web. So that's the, the important thing. Then I grew my business to a £1 million business over the next 25 years. Now, that's quite small. And I think what's important is success means different things to different people. Big isn't always better. Um, 10 people in a company is just lovely. We know each other's names. We trust each other. I think there's an optimum size, about 20, and then it starts to fragment. Um, so we know that through the research that's been done. So I grew that for 25 years. And then in 2008, and I, and I traveled all over the world, and I did great things, and it was just wonderful. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And I was my own boss. <laughs> great. So that meant I put in 24 hours a day for seven days a week. But I did love it. Um, but there was a sacrifice, and that was that I couldn't see my children um, except at weekends. And um, and so that, that's quite a big sacrifice when you're a woman. Anyway, can't have everything. Then in 2008, I lost everything. Okay, so I won't go into the details, but I lost the whole of my business. Um, and I bought a studio in London. It was just the most terrible, terrible, terrible time for me. And I wanted the earth to swallow me up. I wanted to die. And I just had never been in that situation before. And it was just terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyway, however, I had a friend of mine that, that used to phone me up every day and say, this too shall pass. And what do you want me to do? And I said, just phone me every day. Another friend paid my congestion charge. Someone else gave me a car. Another friend gave me a studio for a year. 
and uh, hooked me up with telephones and computers. And um, and then another friend of mine just sent me a wad of money. Like it just came out of nothing. And I have to say that by looking back and what I would say to you guys is the only thing that matters is your reputation and how you treat people. We call that integrity, don't we? So if yeah. you have integrity, it doesn't matter what happens to you, that counts for a lot. So treat people with respect, work as hard as you can, be smart and give. That's the important thing. It's not all about competition. It's all about collaboration now, not competition. So Anita, I, yes. Can I ask you, do you think that your experience, because obviously people have asked me the similar thing. I mean, I, Anita and I know each other. We go back, oh, how many years ago is it now? Did we go to, to Africa together? Years ago, at least 10 years ago. Yeah, about a decade ago, we were in Africa together. Okay. Yeah. And I remember about talking to you one night and just talking about our experiences and losing businesses and the tough times. Do you think that in this unprecedented time we're in right now, the fact that you've been there, you've lost a business, you've put yourself back up again, and we'll talk about your current business in a minute, actually helps you get through what's going on in the world right now today? Yes, I do. And um, I do because of a number of things. One is that we will get through this. So I think we have to just be brave and we have to be in touch with all of our friends and help them whenever we can because something will come up and you need help. So that's that. The next bit is I appreciate so much that perhaps I didn't appreciate as much as I should have done when I had my business. So to be act actually to, to be in the studio, the sun shining, I've got my family around me. Gosh, we're making tea. We're sitting here doing this. I haven't got to schlep up to London or anywhere on a bus or a or a or a train or anything. You know, um, I can I can be flexible. I can work a few hours, then go and take my dog for a walk, and then you know there are lots of things to be grateful for. Now, if you can be grateful. I think that overcomes fear to a certain yeah, extent, no. okay? Because at the end of the day, I think what we're all learning from this is what is important in life. Some people will go back after this and they don't want to work in the city. They think, oh, actually, I quite like to work in, you know, I think the way people work may change drastically. Um, and I think technology is fantastic in order for us to not have to pollute the planet. You know, blimey, we don't have to get on a plane. We don't have to go anywhere. Um, it, there's nothing like touching and feeding someone. Of course, there isn't. But um, but I think that's that's great. So I learned a lot, and I think that um, I'm calmer than I was before. So so just to because the though this this um, broadcast is is to um, inspire our particular students, we are open. We're open to the world. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea is that anyone anyone might drop in a, a student in a different school, uh, someone working their own business, someone looking to start their own business. That's the that's the idea behind it. So, uh, and if you have any questions, by the way, I was going to say you can comment below or, yeah. or anything like that. You should mention that. Yeah. But we're, we're not we're not quite down with all this YouTube streaming stuff <laughs> quite yet. No, quite yet. Yeah, you should like, subscribe, comment, do all of that yeah. stuff. And, we don't know what that means. So. Um, <laughs> So the big the big thing that they're doing is the business survival. So yeah. um, could you let people know what you do at the moment? Because I think what you do at the moment um, will, will interest business owners because I think it goes to, I think more than most, your business is almost a personification of your ethos of, of living and working. Is that fair, do you think? Yes, I think it is completely. Because I lost the whole of my studio, everything, I then started to work from home. So I have a home studio, um, which is wonderful. So it looks like a lovely studio, so it's really, really nice. But I think what I would say is that, first of all, cash is king. We know that. You've got to have cash. Now, of course, a lot of companies now are worried, so the government has you know, has been brilliant in, in, in their initiatives, et cetera. And I think also you have to think about, right, what is it that I'm doing that still makes money? What is it I'm doing that's not making money? And what can I do um, and think creatively of another way of doing that? So in my particular business, which is a family business membership, no one that's a family business wants to be a member. They've got too much on their plate at the moment, you know, because they've got 
you know, people to look after and staff, etc. So we're not actually promoting that to our um, community at the moment. However, what we have decided to do is because a lot of advisors have family business clients, we thought, well, how can we help them be better at working with clients now? And they've got a lot of time where they can train, they can train up, skill up, because again, they're not necessarily going to have that workload they had. Mm -hmm. And they're probably going to be using the time, unless you're an employment lawyer, to, um, <laughs> to get your house in order, do some training, da 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 da. So yeah. we have actually developed a training course for advisors, which includes bankers, lawyers, um, accountants, wealth managers, coaches. And that really is to help them understand the DNA and what makes a family business tick and what they need wow. to be aware of if they're going to get closer to the family business beyond the contract. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. no. and, um and you've got obviously a huge membership. How many members? How many businesses are members of the, the family business place now? We've got about two hundred family business, but we've been building our database, and I think we have about two thousand on the database now. So we've been able to do that, and of course, every single one of those family businesses has a lawyer, a banker, insurance, mm. etc. So we are going to um, not only put that out to the wider fraternity, but we're going to contact our family businesses personally and ask them to send the link to their advisors. So it's much stronger if it's personal. And that's the other thing I want to say to your, that your, your, your team. Personal relationships, no matter what's going on, are the most important thing. People do business yeah. with people. Even technology, it's not all about big data, is it? It's about deep data. And yeah. also, my, my philosophy has always been, know me, like me, trust me. If you know me, like me, and trust me, then you may consider doing business with me. Yeah, yeah. You may consider um, collaborating with me. There's no shortcut to that, no, um, no matter how good your product is. So that's and, and, about building a brand, then, aren't we? And, and what would you say the you know there, there'll be people watching this that are not necessarily our students that may be in family businesses. Um, I think Russ has just put a link um, to the family business place. Um, your website um, below. So if you're watching this, go, go and have a look at the family business place. But what advice would you give to any family businesses? What's the top three or top top five things that you, you end up helping with dealing with issues that, that family businesses may have over, you know, businesses that come together by employing people? Okay. So the first thing is, I think, is stay calm and stay in touch because a lot of people are working on their own. And as problems come up, they're really stuck and getting quite frightened. So that's the first thing. Stay in touch. So we do a lot of um, we we do a lot of drop-in webinars and things, and people can come up, uh, can join us, and they can ask questions. I think we've got one next week, and it's going to be about furloughing. So we're trying to choose subjects that are, that are really good for family business. I think we had two hundred that, that signed on last time. So first of all, is stay in touch because also we're making it our business and with our advisors to know what's going on, latest news. What's happening next? Because that's changing on a weekly basis. Oh, or, or daily in lots of cases. Daily. Daily. I'd say <laughs> changing by the hour. <laughs> yeah. so if it changes, then we're going to make it our business to make sure we have, you know, three or four experts that can, can look at things from a different point of view. So that's the important yeah. thing about family business. Stay connected. The other thing is to um, – we have, we have a Zoom meeting with all of our staff every single morning, right? Mm. That means, yeah. how are you what's going on are you okay blah 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 what's happening with production what's happening on, on uh, you know in every part of our business so i think that really is that's about leadership i think to have you know this is the time to show that you're a leader you need to take the front you need to be at the front yeah and i think if you can then say okay i'm you know i'm running this today is all about that so amalia runs all those because she is the new leader of the business, as far as I'm concerned. So every Monday, every morning at half past nine, we get our team onto a Zoom call. All right. Yeah. I have another yeah. friend, Barbara, who runs another uh, family business, and they have theirs at uh, I think eleven till two because they have a manufacturing business. Yeah. Got to do that. Got to keep in touch. I think that's it's really interesting you say that because in our first um, broadcast, Louis and I were both saying that the key thing we try and do is hire people that are better than we are. So if there's a position 
we try and hire someone that is is better than we are at doing that. However, and you've nailed it, at a time like this, those people need someone to stand in front of them yes, and protect them and yeah. know that we're, we're marching forwards. Don't, don't you worry. We're still going to be here. Um, it, it's going to be all right. And that's what people need. I think, okay. I think you're absolutely spot on. And then the third thing is, is be creative. Think about your business and think about how you can create a new product, a new experience based on what you've got in your audience. Be yeah. creative. Don't sit there and think, I'm not going to be able to tell this, so I'm stuffed. And, and I guess that goes, you know, goes on from your point, something that, that is it's not about trying to sell what you've always done. There is no point at the moment in our business. No. You know, let's take my no. coffee company. There's no point me talking about great coffee, putting out pictures like that, because one, we can't make it, no one can buy it, and it's not top of people's concerns. The thing that the thing that I think is going to make or break brand now is those that are genuinely caring and and genuinely care about their customer experience and all those yeah. things that you talked about about branding yeah. and what makes a good brand and the integrity of a brand. Um, and it's all the stuff that I keep telling my team. Let's not worry about what's going to happen in three, six, however many months you want to, you know, depending on what newspaper or, or, or news feed that you read, let's start talking about what we can yeah. do as a brand for the people that usually consume our brand buy into our brand. Okay. And obviously I brand, branding is your thing as well. So what would you say is really important for brands um, during this time? Well, I, th I was going to I was gonna say another thing. I've got lots of friends now that are out of a job. So what I've been doing is um, taking their CVs and send them out to people to say, would you like someone with expertise in this, that, and the other, just for a day on a freelance basis? So really, the community has been about saying, all of a sudden, there are lots of people that, you know, they're not looking for a job because we know we can't get jobs. But are you looking for someone that's good at HR, change management, or electrician, or whatever it is? Um, then so really, it's about helping our fraternity be useful to each other so we've been, been doing a lot of that i think that's very welcome as well because people mm -hmm. just want a day half a day so again it's it's that flexibility really um so that that's something else that we're doing but as far as the brand's concerned i think it's about kindness love helpfulness um do what you say you're going to do being genuine and whatever, if you give advice, give good advice. If you're going to be helpful, make sure you really are helpful, you know, and keep that other person's uh, spirits up. Yeah, and that, and that to me, for any of our students watching this, is really important advice because we've talked about branding and consistency of branding, whether you're branding a business, whether you're branding yourself as an individual. All of those things that Anita said, I would reiterate to all of our students, are really, really important traits to have in your eye you know this is a term that's used quite a bit of personal brand at the moment isn't it what does your personal brand look like but again whether it's branding a business or branding yourself all of those traits are really really important in, in in developing a brand for those of our students that are looking to you know work on their business so one of the things that i've i've said you know uh, most of my my staff are, are, are furloughed at the moment because obviously they can't go to work they we, we can't have them in a lot of our spaces and, and all those things. Um, but for those that are still in the business, which is a very few, I'm saying now's the time for us to start thinking about our brand, thinking about those things that you don't normally have a chance to do because you're so busy. There's loads of great ideas. You know, Russ and I have been talking about, you know, this is one of the things that we're doing. You know, we are recruiting for students that next September. One of the things that we're going to be doing this week at some time, I think Russ, isn't it, is do another one of these yeah. where I'll be interviewing Russ about if you're in year 11 right now and you don't know what you're going to happen next year, what, what goes on? If you're, yeah, because we had, um, we had an email, didn't we? We had an email from a parent saying, my son's in year 11 and I really want him to do your course. What's going to happen? And of course, because all parents so i know i know people say things about some parents but all parents want the best for their for their kids and so we really feel for those parents that have got kids that are, that are in year 11 um and and what's going to happen what's how's it going to work so we're going to do one not, on not one only that we've got my, my daughter's the same she's in year six at the moment and you know she's she's got her place at secondary school in september but yeah. Not knowing when they're going to go back. It's, it's this period of change for everybody. So we're going to try and address that. But my question for you, Anita, so we, we went, diverted off a little bit there, is 
what would you say to the students that are building their business um, at the moment or looking at developing a brand? Because I know we've got um, a few of the students looking to do that. What would what would your advice be to them? The top things about building your business brand or building a, a sort of startup business. What, what would you advise to people there? Okay. So you have to be very, very clear what it is that you are offering. So don't, there shouldn't be any mazazas. It shouldn't be general. It's very, very specific. You know, I make rocking horses or I provide some technology or whatever. So people understand what it is. Then uh -huh. because you are the entrepreneur, there are the things you believe in and they're the things that people are going to buy from you. I believe in good quality. I believe in being fair. I believe in, you know, write down what your what your your real beliefs are because actually that is the substance of your brand lots of large corporates don't have the benefit of that because someone like me would go and help them create it but you definitely can so what is it that is you're doing what do you believe is important okay that's really really quite important and then what what is your who are your audience going to be who are you going to sell to because you won't sell to every man and his dog you have to decide who is it that's my audience and make that your focus because there are only certain hours in the day. You've got to do something you love. You've got to make sure that you are reaching out and you are connecting with your, your consumer, if you like, and also your influencers and also your, your gang, your tribe. So we, we meet together because we're like-minded. So, yes, be very, very clear what it is you're selling. Be very, very Fantastic. clear what your what your um, what your values are, because people buy into people and values. They don't buy into products. People and values. Elon Musk is is an ex a great example of that. Doesn't sell cars, does he? You know. Um, and the other really is decide who your audience is going to be, and then find out everything you can about that audience, so you can find little hooks that you can connect with them. That's my advice. Oh, fantastic. That's fantastic. So we had uh, we had a question in our first one from Nathan, who's on our course. I think um, he might be and he might not. He's, he's having some Wi-Fi issues in, in uh, Canterbury. Um, but his question was, how do you think businesses are going to recover from this period? So um, and then what opportunities do you see then? Uh, in the future, because there's there's no doubt we we will come out of this. We absolutely will, as 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 sure as night follows day. And then we'll need people like you and Louis, entrepreneurs, to to pick everyone up and and, and get everyone rolling again. So so, how do you think businesses are going to come out of this? And what opportunities do you see, um, particularly for the young people, but but for everyone? Let's let's include the uh, the whole of the country in this one. Okay, so the first thing is, I think you still have to do what you love. So I think your students particularly, um, uh, because they're at entrepreneur school, is you have to do something you love because it's bloody hard out there. There's no point in trying to be someone else or trying to do something else. If you love it, you'll be able to make a business out of it, all right? Because you've got a passion, you put all the hours in, and you want to do it. And what a privilege to be paid for things we love. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing, okay? reassess you know was it all worth it is is it the right thing to do and i think that's okay to reassess those things find out what it is that you love all right the next is team up with somebody and you can do that on zoom whatever and say right i want to look at my business differently now in the light of what's going on because actually we're all quite used to technology now aren't we it's great mm -hmm. so you know and you might decide um, there'd be something you do and then think, right, okay, if I'm going to reach out to people via different types of platforms, face-to-face, -face, technology, a speaking platform, whatever it is, think about how you can ingeniously tailor-make what you do so that it can ride the crest of another wave of this because this is going to come again. So this is not this is not it. You know, we're going to be. Uh, this is the first wave. There'll be the second wave, and then there'll be the third wave. So it's no. not going to go away. But you can't answer your own problems on your own. So no. just have humility. Everyone wants to help each other. So I've I've said to people, if you want some ideas, call me, and I will sit there and brainstorm some ideas with you. You know, two heads are better than one. Definitely. 100%, yeah. And, and, and the other that thing I was collaboration there that you spoke about. Yeah. And, and the other thing I'd I'd enter, you know add to that is mentorship is so important, isn't it? You and I are both big believers of having mentors in in various fields. 
So again, I'll reach out and ask people. I often say, people say to me, well, how did you, how did you get to, through to that person? I say, well, I picked up the phone, I called them, I dropped them an email message. We live in this connected world. It's really, really easy to get hold of anyone that you want to get hold of. Yeah, yeah. Just ask the question. Um, you know, and you know what, Louis? Sorry, just as interrupt. It's a really good point about that. From uh, well, at the moment, while we're all working from home. Oh, sorry, Cara's question came up. That's the next one. Um, and I today, when I was discussing this, normally in our work, uh, Anita and I would have emailed each other about what was happening today. But do you know what we did today? We picked up the phone and spoke to each other, and it and it was a it's a different connection. So I think you you've hit the nail. Well. Love FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a different connection. You know, we've got into this idea that email is a solution. You ask someone to do something, they send an email, it's done. It's not. Yeah. We we we're, we're animals that work on communication. I think one of the other things that's great about being an entrepreneur is it's no longer about having bricks and mortar. You don't need a bricks and mortar space necessarily. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Um, because it's a drain on your finances. Yeah. And um, and it never goes away, and you're you're stuck in some sort of um, agreement. So I think it's really worthwhile thinking about. You know, do I need a premises? And I think at the end of the day, I think people do need to see each other. Of course they do. But it doesn't. There's so many great places now. You can hot desk everywhere. You can hot desk. Yeah. There's a fabulous um, coffee shop in Canterbury. I don't know if you've yeah, been there in it. Uh, yeah, on the uh, Canterbury Academy uh, site. Yeah. It's wonderful. Open to the fantastic. public. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's and that, really uh, nice. Smell coffee, that, lovely food. I, you know. I was going to say that that leapfrogs so nicely or dovetails into Cara. Cara works in our marketing yeah, yeah. team, and um, her oh. she's got a question. It keeps flashing. There we go. I don't know why it's flashing. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Do you think workplaces will change um, the way that, that they work after this? Yeah. Um, there was a lot of jobs um, that have been told that they can't work remotely, but they've made it work during this process. Yeah. Do you think working from home could become more common? Definitely. Um, I think a mixture. I think a mixture. Um, large corporates have built these huge, great premises. Mm. Well, that's going to change because actually people are saying, I've actually enjoyed being with my family. I've actually yep. enjoyed being flexible. I don't mind being fl – and flexible isn't about doing less. Actually, no. I think you end up doing more. Um, <laughs> but maybe the way you work might be not nine to five. It might be in the morning then late at night. It could be anything as long as the work gets done. Um, I think face-to-face -face is really important. I would hate it if I couldn't see somebody, give them a hug and, you know, just – just and you, you can see the, um, the subtle nuances in communication. You can't really get online, no. the body no, language, yeah. things like that. Yeah, 100%. I think that they – I think people are waking up to – because those that will have come through this will think, right, okay, then I think my working life, I'm going to challenge that now with my employers – they're also going to be thinking about one has to change. You know, we, yeah. as, we, as entrepreneurs, we don't sit still, do we? We're always changing. I think that the, the old school is don't, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there's this thing about power. And I think now is a much more level playing field. Collaborate. Do what you love doing. Enhance what you're doing. Enjoy it. Spread the word. Get paid well. Because if you are doing a great job and you love what you're doing, the money will come because you'll attract like-minded people as long as you're clear about what it is that you're selling. I'm just wondering uh, if I, I would have a little way of uh, saying she wants to work from home from now on. I don't know if that was a... <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that I agree with that. And I've often been a big believer in outputs, not inputs. Um, and yeah. I think working from home does, does have a, a part to play. However, I do think that there's going to be a new normal. I you think do want to be disciplined. Yeah. There, don't... yeah, you have to be disciplined, but also... Some people do work better in that structured environment where they see people. I don't know about you, but all these calls that I've been having over the last week or so, you spend, end up having the same conversation three times in a day with someone because you might Zoom or Teams or, or whatever you do, Skype, FaceTime. There's there's so many different platforms. I think that's the other thing that, that people are getting used to is this, this technology. But you'll end up going, so, so, so are you okay? So, Russ, how's it with you? you? You're right. You're asking the same yeah. questions three or four times. Yeah. And I think it's that adjustment phase. But I do think we're going to get to a stage of new normal. I think that we'll reset everything. And then there will be this, we work from home. I've often said to my team, if you can, you, you can work from home. Obviously, I have a lot of staff who can't work from home, those, the, those that are serving us and, and doing that. So it's not yeah. for everybody. No. Um, but I do think that we will get to a, a space where workplaces will be different. I think it will be. It's, will 
it's, it's there's going to be a new set of normal um, as, as a result of this, and I, and I, I think it'll be interesting to see how it, it plans it pans out. Well, farming yeah. is a good example of that. You can't farm remotely. No. You know, you, yeah. because, you, know, you can't, um, like, yeah, you can't be in a supermarket. I mean, now they're the biggest employers of all, aren't they, really? Because they need yeah. people to pack and get things out. Yeah. Maybe if you're an engineer and you're actually, you know, you, you're, you have to be there. Or if you're in construction, you have to physically be there. But maybe yeah. it will change the way people are in terms of communication and make that a nicer experience. I don't know. I, I, I spoke to someone who said that they're going to stop their travel as a result of this. Cause I mean, I used to do the same thing. Luckily not so much now, but you know, a few years ago, I wouldn't have thought twice about jumping in a car, driving to Sheffield for a, for a, a, a one and a half hour meeting. Whereas and now, we, we, we you know, we yes, yeah, we've done that. Right? We've done. Or, or you would jump on a plane and fly somewhere and see someone for, for an hour and a half, two hours. Whereas now you're kind of going, actually, is that really worth it? And I think moving forwards, I think a lot of people will go, why would I want to go spend four or five hours of my day mm. traveling for an hour and a half meeting? So I think and get, get things that. will change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think things will change. It'll be very interesting to see what what does happen. <laughs> you but know, when right. it, Some fundamental things I think will change, but I think every business will have a they have its own quirky, they have its own way of doing things, which I think is really healthy um, because they'll yeah. find what is it that works for them because the hunt for talent will be bigger. Mm, and when yeah. they're hunting for talent, the people they want to hire will have requirements of their own. For them to yeah. perform at their best, we're going to, you know, I think people that are hiring are going to have to listen to what is it they want, what are their values, what they want out of life, and can my business match that in any way? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer that people buy into values, and I think we're really lucky. And I said this in our last last time we did this, and I say it to anyone that listens. My team are amazing. Um, do you know what? They probably could earn more money working for other for other companies. They probably could do other things but actually it's about what we stand for as a business yeah. and what we believe in yes. um the 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 does that and actually we genuinely care genuinely it's all about and i think that people will start realizing that actually what what big corporate worlds have done is 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 changing that will change when we go back you know it exactly. won't all be about the paycheck well yeah. because some things are priceless aren't they so everyone in my business works part time flexibly they all have children some come in a couple of days a week some do 9 30 till 2 30 you know because what they've actually said it is priceless to be able to pick my kid up from school mm. it is priceless yep. to have that so some things are priceless and other things are just worth the you know not being compensated for it because we can't buy time no you know this no. moment after this call will be gone yeah yeah yep. And, um, and 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 as you know, I lost my father this week. It's like it. Life is like a hotel. You check in, you check out. How you leave that room in between is actually your life. And also, what the chambermaid thinks of you when she comes in to clear up after you is another sign of your brand, isn't it? I know it's a bit simplistic, but I think it's brilliant. Really. You know what? And that is, we're on thirty-three minutes, 24, 24 seconds, and what a brilliant thing to end on um what will the chambermaid think of you i think that's a lovely um analogy um Anita, well, thank you so much it was a pleasure so much fun we have oh, to have fun pleasure. don't we oh what's the point if you're not going to yeah. um just before you go though quickly i just think it's worth pointing out that i i know it's all been on hold with recent events as well but anita is gonna do you want to just mention a little bit about the um the the charity that we're working on anita at the moment as well yes that's so exciting have you got the name approved yet louis come on come on come on um no is the answer we're working on it we're, we're yeah. almost there yeah. it, we have a work like, i think we can say it's a working title a so. working title that's fine and so that is just i'm so excited because it really ticks all my boxes for young people entrepreneurism and also uh connects really well with the um with businesses out there particularly with my family business community and others out there so i think this is going to go ballistic i really do so i'm just this is it for me Okay, so do you, want to, do you want to just briefly explain the charity? Of course, it is. Okay. We sign the charity, really, the charity is, is, is really there to support young people primarily, but others 
that get to a point in their lives where they just think, I would like to do something else, but I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. So if we're taking young people, then, um, you know, these, these are the kids that perhaps can't stay in the school they're in and they need to find another way to have those other two years before they go into the big bad world. And what we're saying at um, uh, Amalex, Amalex, Amelix Academy is everyone is an entrepreneur in there somewhere. And these are skills and you can really, rather than waiting for a handout, you can make life the way you want it to be. The Barista um, Academy is super as well because you know we're in a, we're in a cafe age these days, a cafe society. You can definitely earn a living being a barista, but you, but this is an opportunity for you to learn this and also to perhaps work in hat hats as a brand. That's I think that's phenomenal because of the ethos behind it. So that's that. But you may be older and you may decide, you know, I, I really am out of love with what I'm doing, but I'm too frightened to think about um, doing something different. But I think you have to, but what we're here to do is to say, okay, we're here to support you, to give you the training, to give you the work experience, find the mentors, help with the opportunities. Um, and also what I love about this is our concept of peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, so if we've got, you know, two 17-year-olds doing really well in the academy or whatever, it's let's find the charity overseas and actually let's work with them as mentors so that you're peer-to-peer -peer mentors and help them make a living for themselves because everyone can. I mean, I'm half Chinese and the philosophy by the Chinese is if you can't make it, you cook it and you sell it, <laughs> you know, and most people's culture is around language, buildings, fashion, food, you know, so everyone and every country has a different way of doing stuff so i think what i'm excited about mostly um if i'm honest is that where it's going to take us in terms of changing the way people um around the world can help themselves and that's what really and, I think, I think. Uh, and when we have more details or we'll we'll set up another one of these live facebook yeah. Thingies, Definitely. whatever they are, whatever we're doing at the moment, some what stream God, thing. I don't even know what called. The stream thing about the charity, and we can go into more detail there because I know that we're going to be tapping up all of our connections. We are indeed um, to help out with this yeah. this this new charity that be UK wide yeah. um, very soon. But Anita, thank you so much for today. We really really appreciate Such it fun. as always. Such no. fun no. with everything. Thank you. Thank you. And, okay? uh, oh, we will. Very well. So thank you to Anita. So I'll say it's, uh, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye Go from me. <laughs> goodbye from you. Oh, good, goodbye from me. All right. Yep. And uh, right. we'll see you on um, Wednesday. We'll back here Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday 2 o'clock. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Till then. Bye-bye.